Hello, my name is Ann Smith. I work for OPWDD's Central Office Incident Management Unit. I am part of the IRMA team. I am joined by Meg Adams, OPWDD Central Office Incident Management Unit CAT team. We are here to introduce the new Corrective Action Plan module being implemented in IRMA. It will be implemented on March 1st, 2018. We're going to first review the requirements for the submission of corrective action plans. A corrective action plan is required to be submitted for reportable incidents of abuse and neglect, which occurred on or after January 1st, 2015 in programs operated or certified by OPWDD, which means they're under the jurisdiction of the Justice Center. OPWDD requires that a corrective action plan is submitted to the incident management unit via the Incident Report Management Application, which is IRMA. The cap is due 65 days from the date on that letter of determination. This is not a change, we are just reviewing the requirements. For those incidents that were reported prior to March 1st, 2018, the cap submission will include the form OPWDD-161, which is the Corrective Action Plan Submission Form, the documentation which confirms each corrective action was completed, and the submission by upload to the Corrective Actions tab in the file folder in IRMA, also the completion of the Corrective Measures fields in the Corrective Action Plan tab in IRMA. The Corrective Action Plan tab will be replacing the Corrective Measures tab. This is just a title change. So the tab that was previously said Corrective Measures is now going to say Corrective Action Plan. These requirements submitted caps in IRMA, these have not changed. So again, for incidents reported prior to March 1st, you will continue to submit your caps the same way as you have been. We want to remind you that a cap must still address all of the corrective actions identified by the agency investigator, by Office of Investigations and Internal Affairs, by the Agency Incident Review Committee, and by the New York State Justice Center. So for reportable abuse and neglect incidents under the authority of the Justice Center, reported on or after March 1st, 2018, the CAP submission will include the completion of the Corrective Action Plan tab in IRMA. This is, again, formerly the Corrective Measures tab. When you click on the Corrective Action Plan tab in IRMA, this is the screen that will appear for incidents of abuse and neglect under the jurisdiction of the Justice Center. You must choose if there have been corrective measures identified. So IRMA will actually default to yes for you. When it defaults to yes, you click agency submit. You'll notice on this screenshot, it says no data for letter of determination date and corrective action plan date. Those will be populated for you once we have uploaded the letter of determination and entered that date, but currently there is no data for this screenshot. If in that rare instance you actually have no corrective measures identified and no corrective actions to be taken, you will have to click on the no button under have there been corrective measures identified. You will then click no, and when you do, the CEO or designee box will appear you must check that box in order to complete the Corrective Action Plan tab in IRMA. So you will click that box and then hit Agency Submit. IRMA will then auto-populate none for both the administrative action and individual specific action. The CEO or designee notified and approved box must then be checked in order to submit your cap. 
This feature was built into the new CAPS module to allow for agencies to submit a no cap when appropriate. The auto populate feature of none and none will reduce the work on behalf of the agency user. If there have been corrective measures identified, you will add your corrective actions, you choose yes, and then agency submit, and the corrective actions ribbon will appear. This is where you're going to click on add actions. When you click add actions, which you'll see circled in red, this next box will appear. This is where you're going to add those corrective actions. You're going to choose all applicable administrative or individual specific actions taken. Irma is going to default to administrative actions. So you'll see the administrative actions on top is chosen. Those actions will be listed. The actions listed are the same actions which were listed in the old corrective measures tab. So those have not changed. You can submit multiple actions. So you will click on multiple administrative actions at once if you want to, but only actions implemented on the same date by the same person responsible should be chosen together. It's because you will be entering that implemented date, anticipated completed date, title and description for each action chosen. You can continue to add all of the applicable actions by adding add actions. So if you choose one action, click on Submit Action, and then you'll go back to the ribbon where you're going to choose Add Action again. You'll continue doing this until all of the actions identified have been added. Once they're all added, each of those actions will appear in its own box. So any administrative actions will be listed first, followed by any individual specific actions that you have chosen. So for all reportable abuse and neglect incidents under the authority of the Justice Center, you must upload supporting documentation related to the corrective action. Again, this is not a change, but your upload will occur right in this corrective action plan module instead of going to the file folder. You'll see circled at the top right-hand side of the screen, Upload Document. You will click on this to upload your supporting documentation. Please do not try to upload the supporting documentation into the file folder at the top of the incident page where you used to. Irma will actually not allow you to upload documents into the Corrective Action tab in the file folder you'll click on the Upload Document on that Corrective Action ribbon. When you click on Upload Document, a pop-up box will appear. You're going to choose the action by checking the box that relates to the document you're uploading. You may choose multiple actions if the document relates to those actions. So you can either place a Box, a check mark in the box or boxes which apply to the document, or you can choose select all from administrative or individual specific actions if appropriate. So an example of this may be if you have a letter from your human resources department listing disciplinary action and employee assistance referral, you could then choose select all for your administrative actions when uploading that document. Once all the documents have been added, they will appear in the documents list for the correlating corrective action. So within each box, you'll see the documents list. These are the documents that you have uploaded and that you've chosen that action to relate to that document. So again, for all reportable abuse and neglect incidents under the authority of the Justice Center, you must upload supporting documentation related to that corrective action you will actually be unable to submit your CAP without uploaded documentation listed with each action. Once all of the corrective actions have been completed with the supporting documentation, the agency completed, 
and the CEO or designee notified and approved boxes should be checked. You can edit the information in the Corrective Action Plan tab in IRMA until these boxes are checked and the agency submits the cap. So go ahead and continue to revise these actions all the way up until you click on Agency Submit. Once you hit Agency Submit, this Corrective Action Plan tab is locked for editing, so you're no longer able to edit anything in this tab when you click Agency Submit. You will be able to utilize the Corrective Action Plan tab throughout the incident. So if you take corrective actions in the beginning of an incident, you could choose those actions and upload supporting documentation at the time that that corrective action took place. The reason there is the agency completed check mark is that so OPWDD's Incident Management Unit can be aware that your agency has decided that all corrective actions that needed to be taken have been done. This allows an agency to upload those corrective actions and supporting documentation in real time so they don't have to wait until receiving the letter of determination. Once you hit agency completed and CEO or designee approval and the sub agency submit button, then that notifies incident management unit's CAP team that the CAP has been submitted by the agency for review. IMU CAPS team may request a revision of the CAP that you have submitted. If the revision is requested, then that particular action that they are requesting revision on will move to the top of the page, and that will be the first corrective action listed in the tab. So again, as a reminder, administrative actions are listed first before the individual specific actions. If a revision is requested, as you'll see in this example, the request was to revise the individual specific action, and that action then moved to the top of the page. The IMU CAPS team will write a brief description of the revision that's required, and then agencies will again be able to edit anything in this tab to make those needed revisions. When you edit and make those needed revisions, you will again have to recheck the agency completed, and CEO or designee notified and approved boxes. Once you click that agency submit tab, again, the corrective action plan tab in IRMA will be locked for editing, and you will no longer be able to edit this tab. Also, we'd like to point out that on the details ribbon, right at the top of the corrective action plan tab, there are some options for agencies. You can click on conversations on this details ribbon where you can have a conversation with the IMU CAPS staff. The conversation is also accessible through the review page, that blue bubble within the incident. So the conversation is accessible right here. There will be an additional ribbon in IRMA for CAPS conversations. These are conversations specifically relating to the CAP for the incident. So you'll be able to talk with someone on our CAPS team. Again, these entries and this conversation happens the same way as it does in the conversation to date ribbon within the incident on that review page. You should know that it's just accessible now directly from that corrective action plan tab in IRMA. So you don't have to click on the blue bubble to get to the conversation. Also, the IRC minutes are accessible from this tab. So on the details ribbon, just click on IRC minutes and you will be able to view the minutes without having to click on the IRC minutes tab. A pop-up will occur. You can view the minutes and the notes that have been submitted. Another change is that there is going to be an attestation box in the IRC minutes um, tab. And also when you 
try to edit status and close the incident. Before closing an incident, the attestation must be checked. The attestation um, just means that you will be attesting to the fact that for all incidents, you are affirming that the IRC has completed the review and determined that the incident is closed. If the incident is under the authority of the Justice Center for abuse and neglect, you are also attesting to the fact that your IRC has reviewed the letter of determination. Basically, this alleviates the need for you to put that information into those IRC minutes, which we were previously requesting. We'd also like to review entering information for incidents that are not under the authority of the Justice Center. So for reportable abuse and neglect incidents that have occurred while the person was not receiving a certified service, for all reportable significant incidents and all serious notable occurrence incidents. The functionality of this corrective action plan tab in IRMA is very similar. The corrective actions are added by clicking on add action. They are still required. We will still need to add corrective actions. You will still need to add at least one administrative action and one individual specific action. So when you click on add action, the corrective actions pop-up happens and that's where you're gonna choose those actions. Choose any actions identified Fill in all the fields, the implemented date, the title, and the description, and hit Submit Action. Continue submitting your actions until you've identified all of the actions. Also, if you would like to upload supporting documentation in those incidents, you can do so by clicking on Upload Document in that ribbon. For all Part 625 event situations, the Corrective Action Plan tab remains the same. So although the title of the tab will say Corrective Action Plan, the entry will be the same as prior to March 1st, 2018. The measures available are still going to be the same measures available as prior to March 1st, 2018. And you will click at least one of the actions and then submit actions. Just so you are aware, the general functionality in IRMA, the document upload folder is still going to show all of the documents that have been uploaded into the incident, including the documents uploaded to the corrective action tab. You will still be able to upload documents into notifications, investigations, and other in those tabs in the file folder. However, you will no longer be able to upload documents into the corrective action tab directly. For those incidents that were reported on or after March 1st, 2018. Also, when you're closing an incident, you now have the option to choose closed with cap follow-up. This has replaced closed with follow-up issues. We are asking that you do not choose this status when closing an incident unless that follow-up issue is directly related to caps. So if you have other issues in the incident, please leave the incident open until those issues are resolved and the incident can be closed in IRMA. If you have any questions or problems at all with this new CAPS module and anything related to IRMA, please contact incident.management at opwdd.ny.gov. You can also reach us by calling 518-473-7032 and asking to speak to a member of the IRMA team. We would be happy to help you with entering any information or any questions or problems you might have with this CAPS module. 
if you have questions or issues related specifically to a CAP, you'll want to talk with someone on our CAPS team. Again, you can call 518-473-7032 and ask to speak to a member of the CAPS team. Just a reminder that in IRMA, you must be active. If you're inactive for 90 days, your user ID and password will become inactive and you will have to reset your password. You can do so by going to my.opwdd.ny.gov and clicking on forgot password. You'll enter your user ID and click on forgot password and then follow those instructions. Lastly, IRMA has been tested for functionality in Internet Explorer 8 and greater. Other web browsers, such as Chrome and Firefox, have not been tested. And if you use those browsers, you might have unexpected errors. We will be adding this CAPS module training to the regular IRMA training. We will also be adding the CAPS module training to the CAPS and IRC training that the Incident Management Unit does. So again, thank you very much, and please do not hesitate to contact us with any questions or problems.